Hell's Kitchen has always been emotional, all across the spectrum. You've seen joy, you've seen pain, you've seen brotherhood, and you've seen betrayal. But sometimes, the entire season is doomed from the very beginning. Today, I'll be ranking the top 10 worst seasons of Hell's Kitchen. But keep in mind, this is all based on my opinion, and my opinion alone. With that, let's get this video started with the first pick of the day, number 10. Oh dear. Jen, describe the dish. That's a duck breast. Season 3. Whew, boy, where do I even start? This lineup of contestants wasn't exactly top-notch, or as they say, house kitchen material. The cast wasn't exactly the best, and I hated how Chef Ramsay easily threw around the word Hell's Bitches for the red team. Evil and twisted Hell's Bitches. Funny enough, he only booted two of them and moved one other to the blue team. Hmm, so much for the bitches, huh? Tiffany and Joanna didn't last very long. They seem more interested in chatting and flirting than actual cooking. And seriously, rancid crab? The crab is off! It's fucking rancid! Joanna, what were you thinking? Or smelling, honestly. Meanwhile, Melissa's transformation throughout the season was something else. She went from looking like a regular chef to a full-on cavewoman, and her personality seemed to match. What an eyesore. But hey, props to Julia though. She's the OG comeback kid. Before Hell's Kitchen, she was slinging hash at a Waffle House, but she hung in there with sheer determination, even though the pressure got to her at times. I don't think I'm gonna have enough time. The time that we have, one hour to prepare 100 portions. And then there was Jen, who was cool with her teammates, but serving pasta from the trash? I decided to retrieve the spaghetti from the top of the garbage and washed it. Yeah, I'm still scratching my head over that one. I mean, where are the standards? Honestly, the blue team caught my eye more than the red team, but not by a huge margin. Eddie came across as a nice guy, but he wasn't exactly killing it in the kitchen. It was also so frustrating to see him deal with comments about his genetic condition. Now, Aaron seemed solid too, but his exit due to medical reasons was a bummer, especially since he got pretty emotional early on. You cannot come back into this kitchen. As for Vinny, he was a bit of a mixed bag for me. He started strong, but then he started talking a bigger game than he could cook. I think he looked at me and said that this guy is really confident, and I think that intimidated him. Speaking of Brad, he seemed promising at first, but his last couple of performances were a letdown, sealing his fate before the Black Jackets. Now, coming to Josh, this dude was a peculiar character. Eccentric? Sure, but he seemed like the kind of dude you want to grab a beer with. I am 100% confident in myself to get the team started off with a bang. That said, he caught a lot of flack from Chef Ramsay. It's no wonder some folks consider him one of the weakest Black Jacket contestants in the show's history. But no matter how you slice it, man it made for some gripping TV. As for Rock, sure he did have his moments of losing his cool and serving up frozen gnocchis, but he bounced back and became a real leader in the kitchen. And that was regardless of what team he was on. Four minutes, we rally. One scallop, one mullet, two langoustine. We ready? Four minutes. Four minutes. He's probably the only saving grace to come out of the entire season. And now, on to number nine, season two. Where's the last show? It kicked off with a twist, splitting the teams by gender, something that would become a mainstay going forward. So much of a mainstay, in fact, that it'd only be subverted in season 18 with the rookies versus veteran theme and then season 21 with its 20-somethings versus 40-somethings concept. So, in a lot of ways, like a lot of fans have pointed out, it started the obnoxious sexism the show's kind of known for. Anyway, could you believe that they only had 12 contestants this time around? The winner was pretty obvious from the get-go. Congratulations. Now, let's talk about the Black Jackets, because none of them were all that great. Garrett was a mixed bag, sure. He butted heads with people, but he knew his stuff in the kitchen. The only person who didn't have a bad service. And Garrett, you're it. Thank you, chef. Now, Sarah messed up and sabotaged a lot of services, and was even the cause of a bunch of nominations. But hey, I was really rooting for Keith to make it to the finals. He was cool and rocked it on the line. However, man, he totally blew it during the semifinals, and even got into it with Chef Ramsay over who should be in the finals. So you're telling me that Virginia is a better leader than me? I personally think that you have a hard on for Virginia. After all that drama, it felt like Heather was a shoe in for the win. She never faced elimination nominations, unlike Virginia, who was always on the chopping block except for a couple of times when her team won or when she was named the best of the worst in episode 5. 
All in all, it kind of ended on a huge climax. Now, on to number 8, and I would rank season 13 as pretty forgettable. Honestly, it was such a big blur for me until someone brings up Sterling. I'm always 100. What's his 100? I'm 100%. You okay, 100%. That says a lot, doesn't it? One of the lowest points of the season was when Steve, Aaron, and Santos colluded to eliminate what they deemed as dead weight. This move didn't sit well with me and definitely affected how I viewed them going forward. The contestants that got the boot in the first few episodes really left an impression, but not in a good way. JR and Janai were just plain awful, and Deneen's attitude didn't help her case either. When I assign you a station, you have got to own it. As for JR's elimination, it left me feeling a little bit torn, because while he struggled in the beginning, I was starting to warm up to him before he got the axe in episode 4. JR, give me a jacket. The time is done in Hell's Kitchen. And hey, Kaylin and Katie overstayed their welcome if you ask me. And Ashley, yeah, I totally forgot about her until she got the boot. So Steve's departure was a real bummer, and Aaron, well, let's just say his performance was consistently underwhelming. And by the way, why Roe and Santos made it to the Black Jackets is beyond me. All I remember is them crashing and burning towards the end of their time on the show. What a waste of a season. Okay, moving on, number 7 in my book is season 10. Having back-to-back -back episodes dedicated to a challenge, followed by a dinner service isn't ideal for any season, let alone having three sets of them. I mean, it's quite frustrating when it takes more than an hour for a contestant to be eliminated. What's worse is that each of these pairs ends with a cliffhanger, which I absolutely cannot stand. In two instances, Clemenza's mistakes put him on the chopping block. I can walk with you now, you gotta stop telling me yes. And in another, Kimmy's injury left viewers wondering about her fate in the competition. Now, the blue team's performance was notably the worst in the show's history. They only had one victory, five losses to the red team, and six losses alongside them. F off out of it. Get out! Get out! Aside from the absolute winner that was Tavon, I had high hopes for Guy. But his journey took a nosedive early on, especially by episode 5 and episode 7, where he sealed his fate. My God, yes, come sir. here. I've got one warm and one st touch that. Now, coming to Patrick. He made several attempts to assert himself as a leader, but unfortunately, he struggled to make a significant impact. Patrick, give me a jacket. Your time is done in Hell's Kitchen. As for Royce, his journey started with arrogance, but gradually became more tolerable, although his performance didn't quite match up. Are you Rolls Royce? F off. Now, Brian's unprofessional behavior in the kitchen left a really sour taste in my mouth. But deep down, I do think that he had more skill than I initially gave him credit for, and by the way, he seemed to have a good rapport with his team. Meanwhile, back to Clemenza. This dude came across as a laid-back guy, and I was surprised by how his first nomination snowballed into several more. However, as his performance declined, the subsequent nominations felt justified, especially towards the end. And we welcome them with that. This is embarrassing. Meanwhile, the red team and the four horsemen of unnecessary drama, Tiffany, Kimmy, Robin, and Barbie, with Tiffany being my most hated contestant in the show's history. What are you doing? Really? I just washed the dishes. I, I came out here with you going like this. <laughs> it was honestly pretty gratifying to see sous chef Andy show her her place. Now, Robin's tendency to instigate conflicts with both teams was really frustrating, especially when she resorted to blaming others for her own mistakes. I mean, Christina was so right in referring to her as a cancer. Kimmy's regret after her disastrous Southern Cuisine Night performance was understandable. Yet, it's surprising that it took 14 freaking episodes for her to face nomination. How long on the loo and the filet? How? A minute. minute. A minute, Christina, yeah, a minute. Set. And as for Barbie, like many viewers have already pointed out, the vitriol and hatred she faced from the team felt racially motivated. By the way, this viewer right here is totally on the same page as me. They said, another reason to be irritated by season 10 is the amount of white women talking about being from the ghetto or taking it to the hood. Like, shut up. Stop it. Stop trying to be hard when you're just acting like stupid flannels. Amen to that. Okay, let's move on. On number 6 is season 15. First off, the entertainment value, it was barely there. But the amount of toxic shit, oh boy, where do I even start there? Brooklyn, you know what happened? I would pick this thing up, up and I would put it over his fucking head. As for the bottom six, not much to say there either. But those mid-service ejections were a spectacle at the very least. Poor Kevin though. He really got the short end of the stick. 
no exit interview, no goodbye scene. He just kind of vanished. You, I'm fucking do up, me chef. a big favor. Yeah, chef. Yeah, get your apron off, get packed, and f*** off out. First, get out! Now, Eddie's performance on the Garnish Station during his last service wasn't stellar, but compared to some others, he wasn't the weakest link. It's puzzling why Chef Ramsay decided to give him the boot. Eddie, take off your jacket. Now, Hassan's elimination was a missed opportunity. If he just hadn't sent out that raw chicken on sous chef Andy's wedding night, he might have had a shot at the black jackets. Chicken's raw. The chicken's raw. It's a shame that we didn't get to see more of his potential. And how could I forget Jackie and Frank? Jackie seemed to live longer than expected, despite consistently facing criticism. Her unprofessional behavior, like referring to the prep list as the fucking list, didn't do her any favors. I'm gonna put the list. Jackie Rowe, the list. And the infamous incident when she dumped an ashtray on Kristen. Don't disrespect me. Stop disrespecting me, are you serious? It's baffling how she even made it onto the show, given her lack of experience compared to the other chefs. Frank, on the other hand, may not have been overtly sexist as some contestants from past seasons, but his toxicity manifested in other ways. She only won because I lost. That's not a winner. While he may not have been the weakest chef in terms of skill, his attempt to run the kitchen like the Marines likely alienated his team. While his relationship with Danny initially made it unclear whether he was comfortable working with women, his exit interview clarified exactly how sexist he was. The blue team never had any drama until the females came aboard, and that's when the ship sunk. All right, let's move on before I throw up. On to number five, and we have season 11. Zacky Wacky. Sorry, so I apologize about that, Chef. Yeah, do me a favor. Get out. Yes, Chef. Fuck off, will you? Yeah, it did have its moments, but you know, it's wild how many episodes in it were cliffhangers, like 9 out of 10. You could be patient for some, like when Chef Ramsay put the floor without jackets on probation. But others? Total cop-outs, like just telling someone to wake up. And those gaps without cliffhangers? Two whole strings of two-hour episodes waiting for Hell's Kitchen not to end on a cliffhanger. Jeremy! Damn! You fucking kill someone with that! You know what else is two hours? Waiting for one of the final five to get eliminated. As for the red team, they were solid overall, not a lot of weak links except maybe Gina and Danielle. Mary's comeback was epic though. Wow, done beautifully, medium rare. Thank you, chef. Really good indeed. Good job, Mary. But Suzanne taking ages to cook lamb? Crazy, she made it to the Black Jackets over Anthony, who, apart from John, was the only consistent performer. Why don't we think about steakhouse-style appetizers? And of course, Zaki Wacky, that sneaky, manipulative asshole made it over Anthony. Zach, the summer's raw! I've got eight-year-old girls in the dining room, the summer's raw! Now, who else thinks that maybe Chef Ramsay should have given out four Black Jackets instead? At least Janelle, Cindy, Mary, and John were all top performers. And speaking of John, man, he was done so dirty. Plus, the season overall is super stretched out and long, only for fans to find out that the winner failed a drug test and couldn't take up the prize. So, so depressing. Okay, now, the next one I've got for you is a bit of a weird one. I'm talking about season 8. It feels like nobody really earned that win. I mean, look at it. Throughout the entire season, everyone was just struggling like big time. Gordon Ramsay straight up walked out of the kitchen during the top five. Nobody stepped up as a clear leader. From Vinny telling people not to order sides, perfectly honest with you, if you guys order sides, you're gonna be here till next Tuesday. To Sabrina acting like a total child, and oh, remember the beef with Nona over her snoring? And don't even get me started with Trev not fitting in anywhere, Antonius Gumbo Gates, and Melissa messing up expensive ingredients left and right. What are you Zabin doing? What are you, what are you doing? I was gonna go get some Zabin. Get one on! Of course, there was also Boris who was stuck washing dishes, and Chef Ramsay always teasing Rob about his weight. Come on, chunky monkey! It was a hot mess. Honestly, a lot of the chefs were just uninspiring. Like seriously, some of them were completely unprepared, totally untalented, or just straight up disgusting slobs. Take Lewis and Lisa, for example. Pork is f***ing pink. Chef Scott! What? I fucked the pork, it's pink. They had never worked in a high-octane, fast-paced kitchen before, and man, did their lack of experience really show. It's frustrating to see talent go to waste, and Russell is a prime example of that. I mean, the guy's probably one of the most talented chefs ever on the show, but I just can't bring myself to root for him. Five seconds, one, two, three, four, five. He's such an asshole, always throwing his teammates under the bus, and never owning up to his own mistakes. 
and that whole blow up with the prom committee? Total disaster. I knew right then and there that he was doomed. And by the way, even Nona is widely considered one of the worst winners the show's ever seen. I could honestly go either way with that, but I can't argue that she really took the concept of the best of the worst to its logical extreme. Whew, this list is exhausting. Anyway, ranking at number 3 is season 16. The one season that nobody likes to rewatch. Tell me I'm wrong. The blue team stood out as the worst team I've ever witnessed. Johnny came across as both sexist and a bully. I don't know why you even look at me. Like, just stop talking to me for the rest of this season. Andrew was cheating on his wife on national television. That's gonna be bad. For who? Us. Why? All we're doing is laying next to each other. Wannabe gangster Matt was blatantly racist. If I don't get a straight answer, I'm gonna kick you out. Go ahead, man, you sold him. And Paul Lee was known for his consistent complaining and being an ass kisser to Chef Ramsay. If you ask me, with the exception of Ryan and Heidi, the red team wasn't memorable at all. Hey, red team! Red team, urgently! Yes, yes, yes. What is going on here all of a sudden? Okay, now please help me understand what the casting department was thinking by including some of the worst people I've ever seen. And it's not even like they had any talent. The service record is incredibly one-sided, with the red team winning 8 times compared to only 2 wins for the blue team. The blue team was kicked out 7 times in the first 10 episodes, which is just ridiculous. One more mistake, I swear to God, I'm gonna kick you out. It's become a meme at this point, and the service record is the most one-sided out of any season. Even though the blue team won most of the challenges, their poor performance during the services doesn't really make much of a difference. For number 2, I'd say it's probably season 7. The red team was absolutely pitiful, ranking as one of the worst teams in the show's history. When it's brown, it's cool. When it's black, it's fucked. Okay, put another one in, guys. And while I still feel bad for what happened to Holly later, she wasn't exactly a winner who, you know, stood out. Holly, congratulations. Also, the red team's track record speaks volumes. They only managed to win three challenges and zero dinner services throughout the 10 episodes. This means that out of the 19 opportunities, excluding the 10th service, where both teams were working together, they only secured victory in three instances. Speaking of the men, I love Salvatore. He was such a sweetheart, man. Mikey had an alright personality, but his cooking skills were downright terrible. For about two hours, he couldn't seem to get anything right, causing a complete mess in the kitchen. It's pretty absurd when you think about how proudly he sported a Hell's Kitchen tattoo, only to get the boot on the second night. Take your jacket off. Talk about irony, right? Then there was Scott. This guy acted like he was some kind of culinary genius, but after the first couple of nights, he couldn't pull off a single successful service. He also took credit for other successes. I'm a leader, maybe to my detriment. I'm too concerned about helping everybody else out as a team effort. I'm gonna fuck everyone else now and, and think about myself. You talk like a politician. You're not as good as you think you are. He got shuffled over to the red team early on and couldn't lead them to save his life. Not only was he a lousy chef, but he had a nasty attitude problem. Constantly lying and strutting around like he was better than everyone else. No one has experience. There's like no experience here at all. The god complex this guy had, like seriously. And let's not forget Benjamin. That guy was a real piece of work. He treated every single woman that he worked with terribly, singling out those that he deemed weak and treating them like dirt. That, that just sucks. I mean, we're gonna have to rely on her to get the job done. There's no way. I actually prefer that. Red team, you should have sent Siobhan's dish instead of Fran's. His whole, it's not my personal opinion, it's my professional opinion shtick has practically become a meme. Especially after Ramsay praised the sandwich made by one of the women that he tormented. Your sandwich, not good. Your dish got voted off. I would not serve that sandwich out of my kitchen. That's your personal that's, opinion. This is my professional opinion. How smug. The fact that this season came after the most iconic HK season, season 6, is blasphemous. Honestly, the only real enjoyable part for me was seeing Scott fail. And now, for the worst HK season ever, drum roll please, it's season 17. All stars? More like all shit. This is not a bus ride, it's a train wreck. You're a train wreck. Choo choo. No kidding. This season was heavily hyped leading up to its premiere, especially among diehard fans. It's the kind of season where you can already pick out your favorite to win before the first episode even airs. But honestly, the season didn't quite live up to the hype, at least in my opinion. The fact that it's known these days by bringing back toxic chefs over talented chefs just for drama's sake is a huge part of that. Robin's redemption arc felt dull and forced. Ashley! Come here, girl! <laughs> 
What made it even worse was how she kept getting spared over much more skilled chefs as the competition progressed. Sure, her personality improved a little bit along the way, but then she goes and ends her run by threatening Millie. Everyone is to hold you up like a team. That's why you're not going down. Garnish. You're a better chef than me. You went down on Garnish. And I admitted that I was you going down. down. And hey, in the end, she ended up being the weakest link in the final service. I don't want to him. I'm not here to sabotage him. Right. You don't care. And why was she kept over Giovanni? It really felt like both Elise and Robin were on thin ice that night with all that salt and those mangled oysters. Man, so many unjust bullshit eliminations. Let's not even dive into Van's elimination. Chef Ramsay didn't even ask for the red team's picks when he went out. Van, come here. Keep your head up, focus, and continue on that journey. Hell no, I'm not the weakest chef on the blue team, but I'm not gonna sit here and argue about it. When even the contestants are questioning the fairness of the elimination, you know it's suspicious. Oh, and where do we even start with Nick's robbery or what went down in the finale? That whole thing could fill up volumes. But no, seriously, that three-person finale? It sucks that it came down to basically one dish. You put so much effort into your food. You lost and you disappointed your sous chef and your chef. Talk about a major WTF moment. And oh, don't even get me started on Michelle. She had one of the weakest finales of any winner, hands down. There were moments where it felt like other contestants, like Nick, were practically carrying her through her own dinner service. And even then, her performance was a disaster. Ask Nick, I'm plating right oh. now. Three salmon, three chicken, three steak. Three salmon, three chicken, three steak. It was like we were watching Nick's, Elise, or Dana's final service, not Michelle's. Phew, okay, I think I'm done ranting. I somehow managed to get it off my chest in a single video. But do you agree with my ranking? If not, let me know how you would rank the top 10 worst seasons in the comments section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to visit my social media pages, drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications if you haven't already. And if you thought this video was crazy, wait till you see my next video right here since it's even better.